Cedric had been looking for me, sitting next to my mom at church. Mm -hmm. And she has that on her key ring in church, too. I don't know what she was doing. Wow. But she got that on. And he's like, you know him? And she said, that's my son. And he gave her his business card. And so at the time, there was no such thing as black market records on the market yet. Mm -hmm. He was still building it. Yeah. He had a little something that he had done before with like one of our founding fathers from Southside, gangster rap named Homicide, rest Mm -hmm. in peace. And so he had been doing work with Homicide. And uh, here I come. I I show up. I I called the number. Mm -hmm. I came home. I was doing some time. I came home. And uh, called the number like, man, I can't keep doing this. You know what I mean? It got to be something. So you had been locked up before? Yeah, I was gang banging. Okay. I was actively gang banging. Okay. Okay. Banging. And so we getting pulled over for Joy Ryan with pistol in the car on yeah, our way to yeah. shoot that up. Yeah. Getting caught on the way back from shooting this up. We Damn. were just, it was it was yeah. all bad. It was a rough, yeah, rough, rough, rough experience. Yeah, I was on the, the same bullshit about the same time you was. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, it just was what it was. Yeah. And, 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 and not to glorify it strictly right. from the perspective of that's what happened, mm-hmm. period. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's better ways to live your life, but that Absolutely. was not what was happening at that time. Absolutely. And so I came home. I called a number, Cedric arranged for me to meet with him. I came through and by the, I walked in there with 10 of the 11 songs that became Psychoactive done. Mm. They were done. Mm-hmm. The whole thing was done. And he was like, this is amazing. We just need that. Like, we need one track. Mm-hmm. We need one track. So we start working on what became that sickness. That sickness. The last song yeah. on Psychoactive, we made that at Cedric's studio, took the pictures, signed the deal. He started working on all the different stuff with Priority Records, trying to make that pop. So, hold on. So, I'm sorry, Rady. I got. I don't want to skip over Psychoactive, bro. <laughs> Let's not. I cannot skip over Psychoactive, you know what I'm saying? Um, when that album dropped, bro, I remember it was this little cat. I can't remember this dude's name, but I went to high school with him. I, I think I was in 10th grade when it came out. So, we talking about 92, right? Yeah. Okay. It was 92. Yeah. Right? And I remember he came to me in the hallway. was like, man, you got to listen to this. It's X-rated, right? So, he gave me the tape. I'm in Kansas City in Missouri. I'm at Northeast High School. So, you know, I'm up in class listening to it. I don't give a fuck about class, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. This shit crazy, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it was so surreal, and it, and the the imagery and everything was just, it was, it was, it was crazy, right? Yeah. So I was like hooked. I was like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? And but looking back on it, like, what was your, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not that you're about a year older than me. So yeah. what was the, you know, the 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 genius, the 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 mind state to create something like that? Because what you did was you had N.W.A. Mm-hmm. You had gangster shit. You had so you had your gangster shit, but was that you had a little bit of? I ain't gonna say horrorcore, but it was a little horror. It was yeah, but it was vitriol. It was extreme, yeah. almost violence with some gangster shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think you were the first to do that. I mean, the Ghetto Boys did it, but they more was more a little more horrorcore though, kind of you know, and more comical. It. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were yeah. dead serious. Right, right. And that was the difference. Yeah. And I think that the difference between us and NWA and the Ghetto Boys, and, we, and it was utterly deliberate mm-hmm. because we didn't want to be like them. We right. wanted to be like the culture, and we wanted to feel yeah. like because hip hop felt like what hip hop felt right. like. So we knew it needed to feel like hip hop. Yeah. But we didn't want it to. B, we didn't want to be in WA. We didn't right. want to be the ghetto boys. We right. wanted to be different. Yeah, yeah. And so our strategy was, you know, the the weakness in NWA was although there was hints mm-hmm. at their affiliation, right? There was right. no blatant declaration, right? And so one of the first things on Psychoactive was the declaration. It's mm-hmm. garden block. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's crib. And it wasn't no. Then this is how we feel. Yeah. It wasn't no nuance. It wasn't, wasn't no. Yeah, it was nothing. What it, it is. It was the yeah. the most. On the level that it was, because, you know, banging on wax was going on. You had that. But that was almost niche. It wasn't like somebody felt like that stuff was was going to go nowhere or they were going to get a career out of it. You know, it was really just like, we're going to do this and this Mm -hmm. is our gimmick where we felt like we're doing this and this is our life and yeah. our death and our we're dead serious and this mm-hmm. is what it is. And so it was, we're going to declare this, this, this is Garden Block Crab, yeah. first song, it's 24th Street, we represent for 29th yeah. Street, period. Yeah. And we did that off the bat. Mm-hmm. And I think that separated us. And then we saw 
the comical aspects of the Ghetto Boys, and and I'm hugely influenced by specifically Ice Cube and Scarface. Mm -hmm. Those two, um, I saw that there was a little bit more comedy involved in what the Ghetto Boys were doing mm -hmm. as a group. That comedy went away from Scarface's individual career. His, right. his it was a whole different thing with Uncle Face, right? Mm -hmm. But the Ghetto Boys and the presence of Bushwick and, you know, mm -hmm. the Chucky doll and yeah, all of this, yeah, yeah. you know, on a yeah. street level, like, that's cool, but right. that ain't like, you know. Right, right, right. That was comical. Yeah, it was more like horror movie type yeah. shit as opposed to real life. Yeah, yeah so like yeah. it worked on an entertainment level, but yeah. on a street level, yeah. we weren't going too far with that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so I felt like I mm -hmm. want to keep it to where the streets understand mm -hmm. it and, and can embrace that. Yeah. We dead serious. Man, yeah, listen, serious. that shit was like what you had done at that time. You created a soundtrack for just what the fuck we was doing, you know. But I ain't going to lie. It poured a little bit of, you know saying, yeah. gas on the mentality, you know what I'm saying? Because when you sitting up and you listen, I had the vision of a murder. X-rated sitting in a house with a nine in my hand and a joint in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just, and even like still shooting, um, oh, that, that motherfucker you could listen to from beginning to end. And yeah. Sickness. I can remember listening to that sickness, literally, dog, because I think I was on house arrest, and uh, I would listen to it at night in my with my Walkman, and it was like it would pull me into a different world, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And almost, not, not, maybe not in a good way, you know yeah. what I'm saying, but it pull you into a dark space, it does. you know what I'm saying? And it gets you on some bull, you know what I'm saying, that evil you start tapping into. It was a into. very evil experience, man. <laughs> it was darkness, it was. Yeah. It was I yeah. had a dark companion in those days yeah. of my life. And I didn't realize I had that darkness until until I got a bar of light. Yep. The darkness was gone, and then it came back. Right. When it started trying to come back, that mm -hmm. was when I knew, oh, yeah. that that sensation. It's a it's a it's a real dark spirit. Yeah. And I had that companion, and I summoned it frequently. Yeah. And it was yeah. it was my first three records. Yeah. That was supremely present, and you I know mean, it is what it is. Rolling Stone said it was the most hardcore hip hop album of all time. You know what yeah. I mean.